Tonight, breaking news, Japan's tsunami disaster. A huge quake triggers chaos as people flee swaying buildings and city fires. Good evening, I'm Deborah Knight with this special edition of 10's Evening News. A tsunami warning has been issued for nations across the Asia-Pacific after a massive earthquake struck northern Japan. The quake of magnitude 8.9 hit off the country's northeast coast. A huge wall of water followed, sweeping away everything in its path. Many people are reported dead and injured. Evan Batten begins our extended coverage of this unfolding disaster. The quake struck just before 3 p.m. local time. Workers in high-rise offices sent into panic as their buildings could be heard creaking under the incredible strain as the earth moved. The quake lasted several minutes, interrupting Japan's parliament. Obviously, ministers surprised to feel the shocks. After the powerful earthquake, the tsunami warnings gave people little time to prepare. Cars that had been dumped in the bay during the quake were washed back onto land. And it looks like the tsunami has been engulfing, engulfing the port. Early reports suggest the epicentre is 380 kilometres northeast of Tokyo at a depth of 10 kilometres. It's too early to know how many people are injured. Emergency crews are responding to reports of several buildings alive. And it looks, and it looks like the tsunami has engulfed several cities. This quake is more powerful than the recent earthquake activity. A 7.3 magnitude earthquake struck the same region on Wednesday. They can't even yet begin to properly assess the damage. The country is now bracing for a wave of strong aftershocks. Evan Batten, 10 News. The pictures of this unfolding disaster are coming through live and 10 senior foreign correspondent Hamish McDonnell joins us now on the set. Hamish, you've obviously been covering this for the 6pm earlier. You've seen these pictures, spoken to some yeah. of the residents in Japan. What are you hearing? Well, I was talking to a friend of mine in Tokyo just a short while ago. She said she was there for the Osaka earthquake when she was a young girl. Clearly, we know the history of that. That was enormous. The damage was huge. The number of people killed was also huge. Uh, she said this was much worse. That there was a sustained shaking of her building there in Tokyo and now we've seen these incredible images. I mean, you just have to look at that. There will be people inside those homes. There will be people inside these factories. We've also seen shots of, I think, the, air, uh, the air, airport rather in Sendai, which is on the East Coast, totally submerged as a result of that tsunami wave. It's just phenomenal. Fires, of course, have been triggered by this. We're seeing, as you see, these pictures of this massive wall of water, which has just completely gone across the, the farmland primarily, but here are some of the fires that we've seen that have broken out. That, that's an oil refinery in Chebai that we're looking at right now, and we also understand that five nuclear facilities have been shut down across the country. Uh, Japan does produce a lot of nuclear energy. They have big facilities uh, across all of their islands, uh, and we understand that five have been shut down. The Prime Minister, too, was evacuated from the Parliament building shortly after this happened. Uh, the scenes are just phenomenal. I, I, I don't think anybody could ever say that they've seen anything quite like this unless perhaps you were standing there when the tsunami swept across Aceh. Indeed and this quake is considered one of the worst already in Japan's history. It struck about 382 kilometres northeast of Tokyo at a depth of 10 kilometres according to the US Geological Survey. Now smoke could be seen rising from buildings in suburbs in the south of Tokyo mm -hmm. and lots of cars have been seen floating around areas in the north of Japan as well and of yeah. course this tsunami has triggered uh, warnings around the Asia Pacific, around the region as well. T yeah. Taiwan, Guam, the Philippines, the Marshall Islands, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea are all under a lower tsunami watch, so yeah, it has a wider watch. effects. Yeah, that's correct. That's a watch. For, it's a warning for Japan, Russia, the Marcus Islands and Northern Marianas. Uh, just to add to what you were saying before, I think this registers as the seventh biggest earthquake on record, so it is certainly up there. We've heard for so many years about the potential for the big one in Japan. It sits on this Pacific Ring of Fire, uh, which stretches right across the Pacific Ring. So from Hawaii, as well as the west coast of the United States, uh, right around to the other side of the Pacific and countries like the Philippines, Japan, Indonesia sit directly on it. That's the airport in Shibai that I was mentioning just before. Just unbelievable to see that totally submerged. And we have seen, of course, with, with other tsunamis that we've seen in our region, we, we didn't necessarily see the waves hit. This is quite extraordinary in that we have seen the immediate effects of this earthquake mm. and the waves coming in and you can see people on the tops of buildings there waiting to be evacuated as well. 
There have been evacuations in Tokyo. People really, a lot of confusion about how many people have been affected. There have already been deaths reported. The yeah. first death has been reported in an area east of Tokyo yeah. following this 8.9 magnitude quake and the four metre tsunami which was unleashed as a result of it. Deb, I think the thing, as you point out, we're seeing this all unfold on television. While we were on air on 6pm, we were watching these waves pulse in from the east coast onto that farmland. I don't think anybody's ever seen this on live television. I mean, the, you know, we're talking about the, you know, the ability to observe things immediately. This is and the Prime Minister. Yes, if we can interrupt, we have the, uh, the Japanese Prime Minister here now. We should all help to get, help each other to minimize the damage. We ask you to act in such a way that it will be possible to minimize the damage. This will be my greetings as the head of the Disaster Relief Headquarters. Disaster. Prime Minister, Prime Minister Naoto Khan there saying that he will do everything possible to aid of what happened at the situation, speaking there live. And right now, our helicopters in Sendai, Miyagi prefectures, covering the situation there live. A uh, large tsunami hitting the area, sweeping away a large part of the city, washing away farms, homes, cars, trucks, ships. And it looks like some smoke billowing out of some buildings that have caught in fire after the earthquake. Major earthquake hitting Japan Friday afternoon. Japan's meteorological agency saying the quake measured 8.4. That happened about an hour uh, and 55 minutes ago. The agency has issued a tsunami warning for Japan's Pacific coast. That tsunami already hitting Miyagi Prefecture, Sendai area, as you can see from our live cameras on our helicopters. The meteorological agency says a 7.3 meter tsunami wave hit Fukushima Prefecture in northeastern Japan. This is a look at Fukushima Prefecture, northeastern Japan. The meteorological agency says that a 7.3 meter tsunami wave hit Fukushima Prefecture, northeastern Japan. In other prefectures, Iwate Prefecture, a tsunami of 4.1 meters struck land. Prefecture of Ibaraki, Miyagi, Hokkaido in the north were all hit by waves of up to 4 meters. You're looking at live coverage of, from our helicopters up in Fukushima Prefecture. Smoke obviously billowing out from buildings after the earthquake and uh, the tsunami hitting that area. And we are bringing you there live pictures from the earthquake and tsunami which has struck Japan. A magnitude 8.9 earthquake which struck off the northeastern coast, unleashing a four metre tsunami that's washed away cars, torn away buildings and sparked fires and extensive damage. Freelance journalist Aya Asakura was in Tokyo when the quake struck. We spoke to her earlier. Uh, well, basically, I was on the seventh floor of the building, and I could hardly keep myself standing. Um, I ran to the balcony, but I saw the, everything falling off the bookshelf, and, and I saw everybody evacuating outside the building. And our, our building is about eight story high, but around the uh, Ginza area, there are many skyscrapers, and they're basically swaying from side to side. And we haven't experienced this scale of earthquake in many years in Tokyo. And even after the first quake, we, we um, had several aftershocks of similar scale. And at the moment, uh, we're still struggling to keep, uh, get in touch with our families and friends. There's no mobile connection here. Uh, subways and also uh, trains are, have all stopped, including, uh, and also highways have been blocked. We're waiting for more information. And there was just a... Uh, about five minutes ago, meteorological agencies pressure, and they're saying that it was a scale magnitude 8.4 and tsunami warnings along all of the eastern coast of Japan. That's as far as I know at the moment. No reports of death yet as far as I know, but I haven't been able to gather so much information. That's what I know from TV broadcasting. We are okay at the moment, but we are feeling hesitant to go back to the buildings because there are still small quakes. And we are hearing that there are still quakes uh, happening around the epicenter.
That is freelance journalist Aya Asakura, who we spoke to on the phone earlier. She was in Tokyo when the earthquake struck. These are live pictures from Japan of the region that has been affected by this four-metre tsunami, which was triggered by an 8.9 magnitude earthquake, which struck off the northeastern coast of Japan. Of course, people in buildings there in Japan showing the immediate effects of the earthquake that was triggered, mm. causing extensive damage. Hamish MacDonald joins me now here in the studio. Uh, Deb, it was interesting just listening to the Prime Minister talking a few minutes ago, Naoto Khan. I mean, it was just a few days ago they were talking about him potentially stepping down. He, he won't be stepping down anytime soon, I wouldn't think. He's told the nation to act fast to help families and neighbours. Uh, he also uh, indicated that they were doing everything they can to minimise damage. That would make sense given that we've heard these reports about the five nuclear uh, plants potentially uh, being shut down. Uh, now, as you say, it was 10 kilometres in depth the original earthquake about 125 kilometers out off the east coast and that's why we've seen the tsunami warning for other countries as well i think you mentioned them but japan russia marcus island and the northern marianas are the ones with the warning tsunami watch for guam taiwan the philippines indonesia and Hawaii. Uh, they are expecting that uh, the tsunami would hit the Miyagi prefecture but the pictures that we have been seeing are from Sendai. And obviously powerful aftershocks as well. There was a, a magnitude 7.4 aftershock which is extremely powerful for an earthquake as well which has struck. We will update the day's local news after the break and then return to our coverage of the earthquake that has hit Japan. Stay with us.